Welcome to another video in my home automation series and I got some new stuff uh, to play with and these are for an upcoming project where I want to add accent lights to some of my um, you know ceilings in the house so I have a couple of like these drop ceilings it's not really drop ceiling but like uh, you know the place close to the walls where I can hide some LED strips so I can do some accent lighting and that's something that I planned for a couple of years and I thought if I'm going to buy the hardware for it, maybe I'm going to be more committed to actually, um, you know, do the project. So all this money which I spent on these doesn't go to waste. And uh, what I got here uh, specifically is uh, some new, well, LED strips and an LED controller. And the LED controller is the fairly new Queen LED AN Penta Mini from Queen Door. So I have a couple of um, Dig Unos already. I think I have two. Uh, but for this project, I wanted analog LEDs. So I don't want, you know, a lot of color changes and flickering and special effects. Well, I mean, I can handle it, but the family doesn't really like it. So I wanted regular old analog LEDs, which I got here. And uh, when I heard that the new analog board came out, then, oh, I must have these. This looks like a sign that I want analog. Now there is an analog board because I was uh, considering maybe just using some Zigbee controllers for this. But uh, but to be honest, if I want to spend the money, I would rather spend money on a fellow YouTuber than buying something commercially. So this is going to be just a quick one just to show this hardware off. So first of all, this AM Penta Mini, as you can see, there is one here, there is another one there. And actually I have two more that I purchased because the way this whole um, you know ceiling layout in the living room and the kitchen and the uh, corridor is located it actually physically separated into four different sections and i mean some of the sections are really really small um, but even the long section is just like under five meters so a penta mini is still sufficient to drive uh, like a five meter led uh, but the only other issue i had is that I only have like maybe two cores or three cores between these because I was only th uh, considering, you know, supplying them with mains power. And uh, if I want to run this from a single controller, I would need, you know, five wires, sorry, six wires for this uh, specific LEDs. But even probably I would need three wires for a digital, a digital LEDs or a, a, a individually uh, addressable ones. So that's why I decided have separate controllers and then have uh, four controllers and normal strips. Okay, so let's go back to the AM Penta Mini. So as it suggests, it's uh, an analog controller and it has five outputs. So it is ideal for a RGB CCT LED. So RGB, the free color colors, and then CCT, which is uh, two colors for cool white and um, warm white. And as you can see from the layout, I have, well, we have two positive outs, so uh, two common anodes, and then you have two bigger terminals, L1 and the L2. They have higher amperage capability. I don't remember the exact details. So I've connected these to the two Y channels and the three L3, L4, L5 are connected to the RGB channels. And then on the other side, we have power, we have so the power is on the right, plus minus, and we have an antenna connection, we have a USB-C for programming, and we have a couple of inputs, which I'm not going to use. And that's it. And if you look at the actual setup, then, um, yeah, so I'm, at the moment, I'm running it from a USB-C, so this is just a USB trigger board, so that gives me 20 volts because this is a 24 volt LED strip, so it's good enough for testing. And by the way, this AM Penta is, uh, read, is good enough for anywhere from 12 volts to 24 volts. Uh, so you can, see a you can use a wide variety of LED strips with this. So as you can see, power is uh, connected here. And by the way, you get all the terminals when you purchase it. And you also get the antenna uh, that you just have to screw on here. And on the output, I have, well, this particular LED strip, as, long, as you can see, it has six wires. So it has a red, green, blue for the RGB and the black for the common anode and white and yellow for the CCT. And this is how the LED strip looks like. Just hang on a minute. Uh, yeah. 
So we have the RGB LED, which is blue at the moment, and that's the CCT. So that's the two cold white and cool white and warm white LEDs that are in separate chips. And that's how I wired it. So cool white and uh, the warm white and the cool white goes to the L1 and the L2. And the other thing goes to the R uh, RGB, the L3, L4 and L5. So wiring this, it is very easy. And by the way, this is the particular LED that LED strip that I purchased. So 12 watts per meter, CC, RGB CCT and 24 volts. And I bought the non-power waterproof version because I don't think I really need that. I'm going to leave a link in the video description below. Obviously the uh, AM Penta cam came from um, uh, the uh, Queen Doors um, All China website. It was, I think it was back order at that at the point when I looked at first and I signed up and a couple of weeks I got an email that it's back in stock. So I ordered it and it took a couple of weeks to arrive. It was a little bit um, slower than the usual AliExpress shipping, but not by much to be honest. And I wasn't really rushed because, well, it's been here for a couple of weeks and I still haven't started this project. And the LED strip came from AliExpress. And by the way, I picked this um, LED strip based on, again, Queen Door's recommendation. So there is on AliEx, there, there is a thing on his site. Uh, let me just, uh, sorry, resize this so you can see the whole page. So this is the IA and Penta website and you can read all about it. And I think there is, uh, oh, there is an analog LED and there is an buying analog LED strips. So. There are a couple of different options here and uh, a color, I think I purchased this one. Um, I did not purchase the really expensive one which has better CRI value because I mean after all it's going to be an accent light, it's mostly going to be some sort of colors anyway. So I thought I'm just going to be better off with the, uh, with, let's say the regular option. It, it, it's still definitely not the cheapest one, but uh, it's not expensive either. Okay, so if you're interested in any of these, I'm going to have links in the video description below. And the other reason I wanted to make this video, I, I want to show you how I managed to set this up in WLED because the AN Penta comes installed, pre-installed with WLED. So literally all I had to do is uh, connect it up to power, you know, hook it up to the LED strips and, uh, and then you know, it creates an own Wi-Fi access uh, point and then you log in and then you provide your SSID and uh, credentials for the Wi-Fi and then yeah, it's ready to go. So one thing I really wanted to go with this LED strip is I want to be able to control the colors and the white uh, separately. Because when you set it up default, then um, you can either have uh, colors or you would have the the white lights so but not uh, both at the moment but there is a way to go around this i mean it's not it's not really a problem you just have to configure it in a different way so you come to the led preferences once you have done all the other configuration and uh, um, yeah you can um, disable this uh, limiter which i probably going to do at some point but the main thing is that in the hardware setup you have to set up the rgb and the ccd separately so um, here I've selected um, the first output is PWM RGB and the GPIOs are one, sorry, zero, one and three. And you might have to play around with these numbers. I mean, just arrange them um, differently. If the colors are wrong, maybe because you have, you, you know, you connected the wires uh, separately to L3, L4 and L5. So you just come here and change because I think I had the blue and the white, the, uh, the green swapped around. So I just had to play the uh, switch these numbers. And then second, you on the second LED, you configure PWM CT and that's connected to GPIO 4 and 5. And again, you might want to swap 4 and 5 if um, the color is the wrong way around in your case. Okay, but that's pretty much it. There is nothing else that needs to be done here. So the main thing is that you separate, uh, the configure the RGB and the CCD separately, and then you go back, well, save first, and then you go back 
and then you also have to create your own segments because uh, we need to create segments in order to control them separately. So the first is going to be the RGB segment and because that is configured as uh, the first in the hardware configuration so that will start with uh, start LED is 0 and the stop LED is 1 obviously in an analog LED there is only one LED because it's the same color and everything throughout the entire strip and I renamed this, this to RGB and then normally you have an, a button here well there is a button here which says add segment so the second segment is going to be the CCT or the white and that starts from LED 1 and goes to LED 2. So again, that's one LED and that's one. So 0 to 1 and then 1 to 2. And then rename it and then change. And that's it. So now what I can do here is you can see that uh, the RGB segment is selected. So if I, I can, you know, have white colors and I can change them around. And uh, let me show you how it looks like. Um, sorry. Yep. So I'm just going to... Uh, let me kill the light on this one. One sec. Yeah. I think it gets a little bit better. All this still. Okay, let me change the colors to red. Uh, let me increase the brightness. I think it's going to be easier to see. Oh, blah, way too much. Okay, so red, orange... So now I can control it. And you can see that the other, uh, the other LED is, uh, is not used at the moment. Okay, so now I'm only controlling the, uh, the RGB LED from this strip. So you see the, the yellow ones are not lit at, at all. Okay, now if I go back to seg segments and I untick the RGB and I select CCT and I go back to the colors so as you can see, I don't have the color wheel anymore. I only have a um, brightness slider and the, and the white balance slider. So let me see how, let me show you how it works at the moment. So this is now lit. Well, the RGBs are still lit. And I'm just going to increase the brightness on, and you can see that the white comes in. And now it is, uh, the white balance is turned all the way to uh, warm white. But if I bring it over to cool white, then the, uh, the other LED comes on, which is the cool white LED. If I put it into the middle, it's sort of like 50-50. Okay, I can't have all screens on the screen. but So this is warm white. And that's cool white. And of course, when I change the things, it automatically fades, be fades between the two. And uh, yeah, the thing is, I'm, I'm really at very low intensity al already. So it makes it a little bit better for the camera. But uh, yeah, it's hard to, but you can see how the color changes and how sort of that little blob moves from side to side as I start uh, changing over from one of the LED to another. And if I turn it on now, you can see that one has a more orangey phosphor or, you know, whatever coating. So that's the uh, warm light LED and the other one is the cool light LED. And the RGBs are there, so they are still working. And again, if I go back to the RGB segment, then I have the color wheels again. And I can, you know, play around with the colors. Yeah. So obviously you need separate commands in order to drive either the RGB or the CCT LEDs. But of course I'm planning to do all this from a code as well. So it's not going to be an issue that I need to change between segments uh, because uh, that I would do from the code anyway. And I don't really know what it does. Yeah, if I select both the segments then uh, then nothing really works. Oh, sorry, uh, then uh, I only see the color, uh, color changing because yeah, it doesn't know how to apply that to the CCT segments. And by the way, um, since you have a color LED, you still have effects. So you have, uh, you know, if you select blink rainbow, uh, not this one, I don't, color loop. 
then you can, you know, it's still color loops, but of course the entire strips color loops at the same time. So for some of the effect, it doesn't really make sense to have that effect. But I think for others, um, you know, I might want to use some of these. Um, especially if I want it to, you know, fade between specific colors, then I'm just going to supply it with a palette and let's say a color loop where, uh, and then it will just go into color loop uh, automatically without me, you know, constantly changing the colors. So you can still use some effects. It's not going to be the same effects as uh, an addressable LED strip, but uh, it's going to be effects nevertheless. So I probably have to find something which is very slow, very subtle, and it just changes between two very similar colors. So it's sort of like just, you know, the tints just moves around slowly. So it's not really intrusive, it's not disturbing, but it's still, if you notice, you probably can uh, see how the color changes. So that's the idea. And of course, the other reason I wanted to make these two different segments to be addressable separately, because I'm thinking that maybe I should have an effect, um, sorry, it, I should have a logic which controls the color and then based on the, uh, let's say the presence, I would control the brightness. So basically add white to it uh, with brightness using the RGB, uh, so the CCT LEDs. And uh, that was, you know, that was one of the main reasons why I wanted to control them separately. So I haven't really dialed, uh, you know, fixed on what I want to use, but I was thinking that maybe I can have, um, um, let's say the color would be dependent on the temperature, maybe the outside temperature. So, you know, on the cold days, the color is going to be like reddish orangey. But then as the weather gets warmer outside, it goes more onto the greens and then into the blues uh, in the summer when it's very hot outside. I heard that these colors, so, you know, orange makes you feel warmer, uh, blue makes you feel colder. So I think it would implement the, you know, the summer and the uh, winter seasons nicely. And then probably I'm just going to uh, play with the whites um, based on motion. So left, if let's say if there is no motion in the room or um, maybe there is only presence. So somebody is sitting watching at a TV, then the whites is going to dim down. So there's going to be only some colors. But then as there is a motion, somebody comes into the room, then the whites will come on just to give you some extra illumination. So that's the idea so far. We'll see how it turns out. But uh, I think I definitely have the hardware to do all this. I just need to figure out the wiring because all those wires been installed 10 years ago. They haven't been labeled. I have no idea where they are terminated in the junction box. So there's going to be a lot of digging and then figuring out how I'm going to do this and probably find a suitable power supply to run all this. Um, I think in totally, I bought five of these five meter strips. So I don't need all 20 meters of them, but probably I need about 15 or 16 meters. So I should probably prepare like a you know, decent sized power supply. It says 12 volts per meter. That's maximum. I think that's what the uh, spec said. So 15, so 120 watts, hmm, that's 10 meters. 100, 180, maybe 200 watts power supply just to be on the safe side at 24 volts. No, that's, um, yeah, that sounds reasonable. Anyway, that will be coming in a future video. I think that should be all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.